Okay, so now we're going to look at how to send up a render layer and ultimately to composite something uh, for an object like this hero cell or virus or whatever it is um, that doesn't fit into the category of foreground, midground, or background. And that's because it is in the midground at the beginning, so it's behind the foreground object. And then when it comes here in the animation, it's actually in front of the foreground object. So since this is a layer in After Effects, it's either in front or on top of another layer or behind or underneath another layer. Um, so in order to make this work, we have to do a slightly more complex setup where uh, we have the hero cell being the only thing that renders the blue object. And these foreground objects are also on the same render layer, but they just block this object and don't appear in the render. So if we just look at the hero cell on its own, and if I scrub back in the animation, you can see it actually appears to be going behind something, but it's actually, its alpha channel is just being cut. So its alpha channel is being blocked here. Uh, it's by the foreground objects, which aren't appearing. They only appear because this, whoops, uh, whoops, nope, oh, there we go, uh, because this foreground object is rendered in a separate layer. So you see when I take it away, it actually just fits in perfectly with the cut off hero cell. And that allows the hero cell to sit on top of the foreground layer in the After Effects composition. So let's jump back into Maya and see how we set this up. And so I've already set it up once just so you can see what's going on here. Um, and we'll set it up again. So we're looking at the hero layer here. And I've got two collections, one called Hero Geo, where I've got the hero cell, the blue cell. And then I've got Hero Blockers, which contains the trabecula here and the repro mesh, these cells in the foreground. And if we just do a quick render of this, we can see it's rendering out only the blue cell and it is just using the foreground objects to block that cell. So if we look at the alpha channel, the alpha channel is just cut around the cell. So if I scrub forward, but when it comes in front of this thing, it's no longer being blocked by the foreground objects. And to do this, we set up um, separate collections and on the collection of objects, I want to block this thing when it's behind them. I override a material attribute. In this case, I override the innate, <coughs> pardon me, override the enable mat on the objects in this render layer collection. Okay, so let me just delete this and I'll set it up again. Okay, so we're back on the master layer. We're going to create a new layer and we'll call this hero layer. And I'll create my first collection, which I'll call Hero Geo. And I'll add my hero object. And then I will create a new collection. And I'll call this Hero Blockers. Or you can call it Matt or whatever. It doesn't matter. And I will add the main trabecula here. So this object. And then the repro mesh, which I didn't name, but there are these cells. Okay, and now if I just turn on the visibility of this and I render this at this point, it just renders like normal. Now, Actually, I don't have the background layer in here, which should be casting a green cast on here. We'll add that in a minute. Let's look at the 
um, setting up the mat. Oops. Let's close that for the time being. So on the hero blockers collection, I am going to find the cell shader. So that is the shader on these foreground cells here. And since I'm using an Arnold, uh, the Arnold renderer, I'm using the AI standard surface. And down here, there is a set of attributes under this matte menu item. And we can enable matte, which just means that um, the object won't render because it won't have an alpha channel. So if I right click on this and say create absolute override, you can see it's added here and I can turn that on. And now if I look at the other object in the blockers collection, you can see it also has an override. So it selected the shader for me. It also has an override on enable mat and we can, and that is also turned on. So we can open our render view and see what happens. So we can see that the background objects don't render, but you'll notice that they do appear in the reflections on this, which is good. Um, now, if you didn't want that, there's another way you can do it. And in fact, this method of enabling matte could have been used for that background object too. You could have just done an override on the enable matte, but I just want to show there are multiple ways of doing things. So I did an override on primary visibility for the background object before, but since we're using Arnold, we could have done an enable matte override as well. Okay, but we do need that background object in here, right? Because I think there should be some green cast on this object too. So if I just go back into the master layer and just do a quick render, yeah, so it's picking up some of that green color here. So let's add another collection to the same hero layer. So we'll call this hero BG. And we will add the background plane to this. And we'll create the same override. In this case, we'll make an override on enable mat here. Now, now that I think about it, actually, I don't need a separate collection for this because it's doing the same thing as this blockers. So I'm going to delete this actually, and I can still add another object to a collection after the fact, background plane. And so it will have the same override, I think. Let's see. Ah, it doesn't actually. Okay, so that doesn't work because I didn't have it in here at the time. So we'll just create a new collection. So I think it must have had to it been in there when we did the override because it wasn't inheriting the override from before. Okay, so live and learn. We'll create a new collection. And again, we'll call it BG uh, Matt, let's say. And we'll add the background plane here in its material under mat, right click. Ah, actually, you know what? I didn't have the layer visible. So I bet you it would have worked. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, we'll go back into the original hero blockers. I've got this layer visible now. And the background plane. We can get, create an absolute override here. I had to create a new absolute override for this one. So let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. So it is also inheriting, or it is also uh, exhibiting the same quality. So if we look at the alpha channel, it should be cut out the way we want it. And we're getting all the different 
uh, colors from all the surrounding objects. Okay, so that's great. A little took us a while to get there, but it works. Uh, but you could do a separate uh, collection for each of these things, or you can put them together and do overrides for each one. There's another thing you can do. In addition to doing an override in the property layers here, I could right-click on a collection and create something like a material override. So if I wanted to put a new material on all these objects that are in this collection, I can do a material override, assign a new material, and they will all inherit that. We'll look at that in another um, example when we want to render a depth. Okay, so let's just look now, before we get into AOVs, how we render these things out, okay? So if we want to render out our different layers, in the render setup, we have to make sure these boxes are enabled, so these little clapboards that indicate that this is a renderable layer. So you can turn these on and off, so if you do your full render and then realize that you made a mistake in one and you just have to redo that render, just turn off all the other ones. And you can do that. Now, note that by default, the master layer also will be rendered. And you may not need that. So you can turn off the master layer renderability too. And so you can just render out the layers. So when we want to render, we go into the render settings here. And we set up the render just like we normally do. And let me delete this so you can see what's going on. Um, so for rendering a an animation, we have to change the frame slash animation attribute. By default, it's on single frame. And we have to change this to name number extension. And this way, it gives you a name for the file, the frame number, and then the extension. And we're using EXRs here. And you can use whatever a TIFF for EXR, just something that's not compressed. Um, and then frame padding indicates the number of zeros that are, or the number of digits that are in the frame. Now it's a little hard to see here, but this shows you the naming. So it'll be compositing example 2.0001.exr. So the four indicates that it should be four digits in total. If I set this to one, then you would just get the frame number one and the frame number 90. The problem with this is that sometimes uh, certain compositing programs will read these out of order. So it's always safe to have, a, you know, at least I always just leave it on four, and that's the default value to add frame padding here. Then, of course, you have to change your start and end frame. Now, remember, when we were thinking about rendering this out, we realized that we didn't need to render out all the frames. So this is a 90 frame animation. But we don't need all the frames for the background layer, right? We just need one frame for that because it just doesn't change over the course of the animation. So we can override this too. So we want to go into the background layer, make it visible, and then right click on end frame here and create an absolute override and change this value to one. So it will start on frame one and it will end on frame one. You can also change this, which layer you're affecting here in the render settings by changing the layer up here too. But let's just do it the old fashioned way. So we'll go back to the render setup. We'll make the mid-ground layer visible. And you can see that's updated here. We'll right click on end frame, create absolute override, change this to one. So those are the two that we don't that don't need to change. The foreground layer does need to change because those cells are moving in the foreground. And the hero layer has to change because both the cells in the foreground are moving and the hero cell itself is moving. Okay. So the other important thing to change here is the file output and the file name. So by default, it's just going to inherit the name of the scene. You can right click here and get some presets and so you probably, I usually do scene name, depending on how you have your project set up, but let's say scene name, and then 
render layer. And so this will now be called, if I just click out of this, compositing example two underscore hero layer dot frame number dot extension. So this will be a good way to organize your scene. Now you could even copy this, put a slash in between and paste it. And it will create a, a folder with this name and then the files within with these names, with the same name. So you just have to organize it however you want. Then of course you have to do things like change your sample rate and all that kind of stuff. And we'll come back to AOVs later on. I've got a whole bunch of AOVs. I'm just going to get rid of them. And now when you want to render, let me just save my scene before something bad happens. But when you want to render, you can do it in one of two ways if you're using Arnold. So I'll go to my rendering menu set here. And under render, we can do a batch render. And by default, it will um, render any renderable layers. Now I've just noticed that when I was demonstrating this, I turned all of these off. So I can turn that back on and I don't want my master layer. And so if you go to render, batch render, and you've chosen Arnold as your renderer over here, um, there's no options for the Arnold renderer. So you don't open that up, click on this and it will render in the background. And if you have an Arnold renderer license, it will render without a watermark. Okay. Now, however, if you don't have an Arnold license, you can still render out sequences, but it doesn't do it in the background. It actually does it in the foreground in the rendering window. So render sequence here, in this case, you do want to open the options and choose the camera that you want and make sure all render enabled layers are selected. And there are other things you can add here if you want to change the file location. Otherwise, uh, it will just go by what is in the render settings. And you can say render sequence and close and it will start rendering in the foreground. So the downside to this is it takes up all the attention so you can't actually work in this Maya file um, while it's rendering. Uh, in the batch render, it renders in a, a hidden version of Maya in the background uh, or a hidden instance of Maya in the background and you can continue to render here. Now just uh, as a note, if you want to keep working while it's rendering, if your machine is capable of doing that, you can go into the system menu here and you'll notice that auto detect threads is turned on. So this is how much of your CPU it's going to use. So I've got uh, 16 cores and so 32 threads. And so if I leave this on, it's going to use all of them. And if I try and do anything else on the computer while that's going on, it will only be able to do that in between little render buckets. So it will slow things down. So if you want to keep working, doing something else in the meantime, you can turn off auto detect threads. And so if I want to preserve two of my threads and just devote 30 to rendering, I can say minus two here. Or alternatively, I could type 16 so it uses half of my threads for rendering and leaves half of them for me to work with or something. But if I'm just, you know, doing emails or something, I can do minus two, leave you with two threads to, to think about that kind of stuff. And then set the render going and it will uh, send them to your renders folder as long as you have your project set up properly. Okay, so in the next video, we'll come back and we'll look at rendering out certain AOVs, arbitrary output values, like a depth pass uh, and maybe even an ID pass. We'll see. Okay, thanks.